Sunday statement draft with Thursday included. All of week 12 played to date. Mike, you're up first. Biggest statements you've seen get made. Well, biggest statement, I think, by the Raiders saying, see, we can have this offense that we had in the beginning of the year. They go to Dallas on Thanksgiving while I was laying on the couch with my pants unbuckled because my stomach was so full of turkey watching what the Raiders were doing in this game, putting up 500. We just started talking about this Dallas offense and this Dallas defense of what they were doing. Raiders put up 509 yards of total offense. Uh, Carr put up 373 passing yards as the Raiders get the win on Thanksgiving. They're just on the outside looking in to the playoffs, I believe, at this point right now. But if that offense, this is what they were doing early in the year, especially passing so much when the running game wasn't going, they got that offense clicking on Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, 38.5 million average viewers for that, the biggest audience for a regular season game since 1990, Giants 49ers when they were both 10-1. and But you get two compelling teams, a high-scoring game, and uh, a lot of people tuned in and saw a lot of penalty flags get thrown. I'll start with Leonard Fournette. I, I, we talked about him earlier, but it's, it, it merits mentioning him again. A four-touchdown performance, plus what he did at halftime to light the fire. It can't always be Tom Brady who's the one to, to pull the cord on the lawnmower to get things going on a day when the energy's down. You need a variety of leaders who can make it happen. So Leonard Fournette made it happen on the field, made it happen off the field, and the Buccaneers get a win that felt like it should have been a loss as they continue to try to make sure they don't have to go on the road, Mike, during the postseason. Love seeing that big man carry the ball, no doubt about it, and drop that shoulder. Uh, my second in the draft is going to be uh, the draft of the top rookie wide receiver as far as receptions are concerned. It's Jalen Waddle from the Miami Dolphins. 77 receptions. He's fifth in the league right now. Not, not amongst rookies. He's fifth in the league right now. Cooper Cup leaves it with 92. Waddle has 77 receptions, four touchdowns, but playing on a team that's not going to the playoffs in the Miami Dolphins. I, and we've mentioned, obviously, some of the young wide receivers. We mentioned Jamar Chase a lot, but even second- and third-year receivers. This league is in great position with young receivers. Jalen Waddell probably doesn't get enough recognition because he's on a team that's not going anywhere this year. Don't write them off yet, though. they, they got a couple more games they can win before they have to go on the road again. They have a bye coming up. They could be 7-7 seven and seven going into the last three. Now, even then, that may not be enough to get there. But that they at least still have a pulse, and uh, they've played well for the past few weeks. All right, uh, second one for me, and and this is a game we have mentioned not at all for good reason. It was the Falcons, and it was the Jaguars. But Cordero Patterson continues to find a way to thrive beyond the position he was drafted to play in the NFL eight years ago. Disappointing receiver in Minnesota, became a special teamer, became a jack-of-all-trades. He had 108 rushing yards yesterday and two touchdowns for the Falcons, despite he's technically a running back, but we know he's a receiver. He had 27 receiving yards on top of a great performance. He's the reason why the Falcons won yesterday, and he's the reason why they still have a chance to string some wins together and get to the playoffs. All right, Sunday Statement Draft, here we go. Week 12, Mike, you are up. Round three. I'm drafting this Denver Bronco defense. Now, they've won three of their last four games, or again, right on the outside looking in in the AFC playoffs. But in three of those wins in the last four games against Washington, Dallas, and the Chargers, they've given up 39 total points. My, my math says that's just 13 points a game. They have 10 sacks and five interceptions. So this defense is definitely keeping this team in games and giving their offense a chance. And when you can step up and play good defense, you're going to give yourself a chance in every game. As I said, the outside looking in, if you can get into the playoffs somehow, some way, and have a tough defense, uh, you know they always can keep that offense around a little bit. But they have stepped it up in those three wins in the last four games. So kudos to that Denver defense. Yeah, and what about the Chargers? My goodness, they are Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, they have the potential to win every single game, but it's win one, it's lose one, it's look good one week, it's look horrible the next week. But uh, kudos to the Broncos on the right side of 500 this late in the season for the first time since the year that they won the Super Bowl in 2015. Last one for me, we talked about the Bengals earlier and Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and we mentioned Joe Mixon, but i got to give Joe Mixon some props here. 165 yards rushing yesterday on 28 carries and a pair 
of touchdowns. Last week against the Raiders, he had 123 and two touchdowns. So if my math is correct, and it rarely is, that's 228 rushing yards, 288, see, had to double check. 288 rushing yards and four touchdowns over the last two games. As the as the Bengals have pivoted toward this, let's take what's there. And one of the things that's there, Mike, is the running game and Mixon, a late season star emerging. I uh, love love watching what he's doing. And as I said, we know the passing game, but playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. Run the ball. And if you can count on a guy like Mixon to run it or catch the short passes out of the backfield, that is a huge plus. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.